So in class we worked on how to write quadratic equations from tiles and there's two things you need to keep in mind. The first is there's one process when you have a full rectangle or square like this and there's a very similar process when you have kind of a weird looking shape. We're going to go over both of those together. So when you have a full rectangle or square there are four steps we need to follow. The first step is we're going to start off by drawing a starter square for each stage. Now your starter square, remember, is going to have dimensions that match the stage number. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by drawing a starter square for each of these diagrams here. Now for stage one, that means my dimensions are going to be one by one. Because you remember your dimensions match your stage number. For a stage two, I would have a two by two square. Stage three would give me a three by three starter square. And finally, stage four would have a four by four starter square. And you always have to start with your starter square, no matter what. Now, the second step is going to be to label your starter square. Now remember, we're trying to find our areas here. So when we label our starter square, we're going to label each side x because when we find the area of a rectangle we're looking for length times width and so this is x and x. x is going to represent our stage number. So in a stage number 1 this x is a 1 by 1. In stage 2 this x represents a 2 by 2 square. Stage 3 x is 3 and so on and so forth. And the reason we do that is because eventually we're going to have to find any possible stage and I'm going to show you how to do that using this information but we need these X's to represent any possible stage. Now once you have your starter square and it's labeled your next step is going to be to find your extras and what I mean by extras is you're looking for all the extra rows and columns that you have. Now remember this method will only work if you have complete rows and columns. So when I look at this stage one, what I notice is I have my starter square plus I have one more complete column right here. And that pattern is going to be consistent no matter which stage of my pattern I look at. I have x plus one more column. Always x plus one more column then I need to do the same thing for my extra rows. Your rows go up and down here so I have this X plus I have these two more rows, one, two. I have this X plus two more. And like I said you're going to notice that this pattern, oops sorry about that, that's kind of a funny line. This pattern is going to be the same sorry I can't draw straight lines right now. Let me go fix that. I'll use my cheater tool, my straight line tool. Oh, but now it's not the right color. Why am I so picky? Here we go. So we always have the same thing, two extra rows, two extra columns. Now we're almost done in writing this equation to find the area of this shape. The last thing is we have to write our expression. That expression is going to be my length times my width. And my length, if remember, that's going to be x plus your extra rows and x plus your extra columns. Okay, So one of my measurements, either my length or my width, is going to be what I have on the top of this, x plus 1. And then my other dimension is going to be going down the side, which is x plus 2. And remember, what this means, this is my starter square across the top plus one more and then my starter square plus two more. This is the expression that we can use to represent any area for any stage whatsoever. So for me to show you this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find how many tiles or what the area would be for a stage seven. Okay, so stage seven, what I would do is I'm going to take this equation, this x plus one, x plus two, and I'm going to substitute this 7 in for x. So I've got 7 plus 1 times 7 plus 2. Now here's why we do this. I want you to think back to what we have up here. We had a starter square. Okay? And in 
that starter square, this side was x, and this side was x. But then we had one more across the top, and we had two more going down this side. Now, what I'm trying to do is figure out for a stage 7. Stage 7 means my starter square has 7 on each side of it. So this side is 7 plus 1, which is right here, and this side is 7 plus 2, which is what we get right there. So that's how this formula works to help us find any stage. And then we just have to do the math. So 7 plus 1 is 8, 7 plus 2 is 9, and then to find our area we would multiply those together and get 72. So there would be 72 tiles in a stage 7 shape. Okay. Now this is the process you're going to use any time you have a full rectangle or a full square. The process is a little different if you're missing pieces, if it's not a full shape. So you'll notice the steps look the same. Starter square, label the starter square, find the extras, write the expression. There's just a little bit of a difference, okay? Stage one starts out exactly the same. Draw your starter square. The dimensions must match your stage number. Okay, when you have stage one, and sometimes, like in this case, stage two, it's kind of hard to know where your starter square goes. The bigger the shape, the easier it is to find your starter square because you know, for stage three, for example, you have to have a three by three square. There's only one place to put a three by three square. Same thing, stage four, there's only one place where I could draw my starter square. So algebra is all about patterns. So if you continue this pattern backwards, look at I always have two extra boxes on the top and one sticking out on the side here. So this was where my stage two starter square should go. And this, the hardest one, is where my stage one starter square goes. Now, the pattern is consistent. You're going to get the same information no matter where you do your starter square, like for here and here, like if you moved it a little bit, you're still going to get the same answer. So sometimes starting with your bigger square can help you. All right, so step one, draw your starter square. Step two, we need to label the starter square. Now, since I don't have full rows and columns, I can't just label them x and x. We're going to label this a little differently. I'm going to label the area of my starter square x squared. Okay, so inside this box I have an area of x squared. Now remember, x is your stage number. So if I do 1 squared, that means the area here is 1. 1 times 1 is 1. In my stage 2, 2 by 2, 2 squared would give me an area of 4. So what we're doing is we're labeling our area just with the value of x. Now, Step three, find the extras. Instead of finding extra rows and columns, we're just going to be looking for the total number of extra boxes that we have. So here, I have my starter square plus three more boxes. On this one, I have my starter square plus three more boxes. And again, all about patterns, you'll notice no matter what stage you're on, it's always a starter square plus three more boxes. So now we're time, now it's time to write our expression. And when we write our expression this time, that's how we write it. We write our starter square, which is x squared, plus the total number of extra boxes I have, three. So x squared plus three. Now, how would I use that to help me find stage 10? Again, you're just going to use that equation, and then we're going to plug in 10 for this x value. So I have 10 squared plus 3. Well, 10 squared, 10 times 10 is 100, plus 3 means that in a stage 10, I would have 103 tiles. And hopefully that makes sense to you. If you look at this pattern, remember, Stage 10 would be a 10 by 10 square, so that would be 100, and then I'd have these three extra.